Okay, let's take a look at this investment problem. We've got Heidebreck Design, and they acquire 30% of the outstanding common stock of Blossom Company on January 1, 2020. They acquire it by paying $844,000 for 42,200 shares. And they tell us that Blossom declared and paid $0.20 cents per share cash dividend on March 15th, June 15th, September 15th, and December 15th of 2020. Blossom also reported net income of $381,500 for the year, and the market price of Blossom Common Stock was $0.26 per share. All right, now in the first part of this problem, they're asking us to prepare the journal entries for Heidebrecht design, assuming that Heidebrecht cannot exercise significant influence. Okay, so we're going to take a look at these entries and the proper financial accounting of them, assuming there is no significant influence. So let's go through the entries one at a time. Here's our first entry. Our first entry on January 1st would be the acquisition of the stock investments. We put it in an account called stock investments uh, for the $844,000 that we paid. Here's where that number came from. Okay, and we paid cash for it. Let's look at our second entry. Our second entry says we need to record the dividends on March 15th. Now, since we're not using the equity method because we, we cannot exercise any significant control, we simply debit cash for the amount of dividends we receive and credit dividend revenue. Okay, now I've readjusted the screen a little bit so you can see how I came up with the $8,440. It's the 42,200 shares we acquired at 20 cents per share. That's the amount of dividend. Now, that same entry is going to be, be repeated on June 15th, September 15th, and December 15th. Each time we receive the dividend, we increase cash and show income in the form of dividend revenue. Okay, now I've readjusted the screen again so you can see the final entry. Uh, the final entry we have to do is record the fair value adjustment. Okay, and what we see is we had an increase of $253,200. Well, how do we calculate that? We had the $844,000 minus $26 times the number of shares we had outstanding. All right, now sliding back up to the top to reinforce where those numbers came from. The $844,000 was the price we paid for our 30% interest in Blossom Company. And at the end of the year, the common stock had a market price of $26. So we have an unrealized gain to record when we have 30% and we don't have control. And uh, let me slide back up so it's about where it was. And so you see the calculation. Take the cost less the current market price. And um, uh, we see we have a fair value increase in the stock value. So we write up the stock to the fair value and show an unrealized gain or loss uh, as an income account. Okay, next we're going to tackle a slightly different question. We're going to tackle the same entries, only this time we're going to assume that Heidelbrock Design can, can exercise significant influence. Now this means we have to use the equity method, and they specifically tell us to use the equity method. Okay. So the first entry is the same. We debit uh, the investment, stock investments, right? Putting on a long-term asset on our balance sheet for 844000 credit to cash. But now, on March, June, September, and December, instead of showing dividend income when we receive the cash, we are reducing our stock investment account, right? The way we treat it is, you know, here we're treating an asset now we're essentially replacing one asset, the stock investment account, with cash. Okay, So it's essentially a transfer from stock investments to cash. You could think about it that way if that makes sense to you. 
If not, then don't think about it that way. We're receiving cash, and with the equity method, anytime we get a dividend, we have to decrease the investment in the subsidiary or the, the, the stock of a different company we're purchasing. Okay, and then we have to get through that last entry. And the last entry, we, um, we're going to adjust the stock investment account. Okay, now I've placed the background information right here on your screen just for a minute, just so you can see the information again. Uh, the, the key point with the equity method is we've got to adjust for net income. So Blossom reported net income of 381500 for the year. So let me slide this away. And you can see we're going to take that 381500 of income times the 30% we own, right? We purchased 30% of the stock. And that's 114450 So we have to show the increase in our asset value based on the income of the sub where we have some some controlling interest. In other words, we're using the equity method. When the sub reports income, we accrue that income on our books by increasing the stock investment account by that dollar amount. Okay? And that takes care of this part of the problem. Okay, now the last part of this problem says it to indicate the balance sheet and income statement account balances under each method of accounting. Okay? So the cost method, the balance is $1,097,200. Well, how do we come up with that? We had the uh, $26, $26 stock price times the 42,200 shares. So that's what the stock investments would appear on the balance sheet. Now, with the equity method, we had three entries. We recorded it at cost, and then we increased it by the share of the subsidiary income that we claim is ours, right? Since we control, we have some control of that investment. And then we subtract out the dividend income, which reduced the value. Uh, the 33760 was the various dividends. Okay? And that gives us a, a $924,690 value. Now, let me slide this down a little bit. Okay, so with the cost method, you would record 33760 of dividend revenue. With equity, there's no dividend revenue to record since we're recording all the income on a accrual basis for the percentage of the subsidiary that we, control, that we own and control. Okay, so there's an unrealized gain using the cost method. That isn't the case with the equity method. And then finally, what revenue do we show from the stock investments? Well, we show none. We show dividend revenue when we use the cost method but we do show revenue from the stock uh, investments. Uh, again, we're accruing the income that we uh, control of that sub. So that takes care of comparing the cost method to the equity method, the last part of this problem. So I hope you found that helpful.